So let me show you how can a typical GET request API test look like. So here I'm gonna create a new test and I'm gonna give it a description GET request and the scenario will be GET user detail. So again, give it a request object. And now let me actually copy paste this because the start will be pretty much the same. We want to get, we want to call the request on the request API and get users and the detail of user number, you know, let's change it and let's, for example, use the user number one. Then we want to parse the response body. So I'm going to create a second variable response body and it's json dot parse evade response dot text just like this so and typically you would start with console logging the response body to actually see what data are coming to you or if you have uh, api documentation for example provided by your members of your API or backend team, you can use it. But in our case, we don't have it. So we need to actually console log data so we actually can see what is coming with the response. So console.log response body. And also let's annotate it as that only. And step number one, let's see and let's actually call the endpoint to see what's coming back to us. And you can see these data we have already seen so but now how to write assertion so at the top you call expect and now let's say I want to start again with asserting the status so response dot status and we want to assert it to be 200 we already know how to do it and we should always start with asserting the response status. Now, let's say I want to assert some data from the data object. So I type expect. Now I take response body dot data. And I'm using dot data because the data here is the name of this object. If this would be named, for example, user, I would use response body dot user, you know? always use the name of the json and what i want to you like use next let's say id so data dot id and i want to call assert to be one and you know we don't no longer need this console log and if i save it now if you want to assert something more you just follow this pattern you type response body that the level, the first level of the data which are coming, this is name data, dot and anything inside. And for example, I want to assert the first name and last name. I can do expect response body dot data dot first name to let's say contain text and it can be George I can do the same for the last name blood and there is also one typical example and let's say you can get in the data, for example, a timestamp or a date or anything, but you cannot technically assert it because the data or the value will be always the same. So what we can do in this case, we can just assert that the attribute or data contains any value. You know, we don't assert a specific value. We just take a look and say, hey, playwright, if the, let's say timestamp is here, it's okay. So to do it, 
we can call expect response body. Let's say we want to use this for the email data dot email, and we can use to be true free. Or if you want to do the opposite, you can do to be falsely. And if you take a look at the description, it means that if there is value like false, zero, null, undefined, or none, it will fail. Everything else with pass, which means if the email contains at least some value, it will make the test pass. So that's it. This is how, you, how your like typical API test would look like. You call the request and store it to response. You parse the response body or its data into variable called response body or these names can be a little bit different, but this is just typical naming convention. Then you typically start with asserting a status and then you can start asserting the data. In this case, we want to assert ID, first name, last name to contain those specific values. And also we just want to check that the email is there. So let's save it and let's run the test. And as you can see, we have nice error. And that's a small catch I actually forgot. And you can see the playwright gives this information to us. You cannot use to contain text to the locator object. So we need to change to contain text. Use the function to be. And this E should be a low letter like this. And now run the test again. And now the tests are passing. I just wanted to show you how it looks like when you actually do some not very clever mistake like I did here. And Playwright will navigate you and tell you what went wrong and how to actually fix it. So now if we change it to 2B, now the tests are passing. Well, I know it's typical common pattern to use 2B. I just made a little small mistake there, but that happened from time to time. So remember, if you want to assert the values in API testing, always use to be function provided by Playwright. And that's it. In the next few videos, we will, in the similar way, we will assert the different endpoints and we will take a look at the post request, update request or put, and of course, delete. So that's all for get. I can recommend you to take a little bit more practice. You know, you can find different API endpoints or take a look at the website request, which provided more endpoints to call get. And you can just learn more assertions, you know, just to make sure you understand how to assert the data coming from get request. And if you are confident, let's move on to the post request in the next video.